Today, we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna teach you how to make this image. Now, I'm doing that for a couple reasons. The first of which is I really wanna start building out a portfolio. I've had a bunch of cool art-based ideas that aren't necessarily videos recently, and I wanted a place to put them. Secondly, Adobe Premiere is running into a strange error where it fails to import more than two files at any given point. So that means I can only make a video with one single clip today. So this edit is gonna be cut free, edit free, really all in one shot. So the tools that I use to make this are a stock image of a woman, a stock image of some swirly oil-based paint, or it might even be a render to be honest with you, and Photoshop. I'm not too sure how to use Illustrator, and I don't know many of the popular Photoshop tools, but I've been using it for about five, six years, and I think I've mastered my own little way. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna start by opening up a fresh instance of Photoshop, as you see here. The next thing, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and grab our stock images. So here is Dana Cole Photography. It's a site that I found quite a while back with a very talented photographer behind it. And one of the images, this one right here, is the one that we're gonna be using. Now, when we try to open the thing itself, you're gonna notice that the image is relatively small, 1000 by 715. We want to work with something bigger, and even though it's not necessarily available on the site, there are a couple tricks to kind of get the largest image off of this Squarespace website. The first thing, I have a little extension here called Image Downloader, and what that would allow you to do is go ahead and download any image you want currently on the page, and you can sort it by size and height and things like that, but that doesn't always work. The next option, and this is if you take a look into the URL itself, right at the end here, it says 1000 width. We're gonna change that to let's say 9,999. So what this is gonna do is force the width of the image to be as large as possible. And here we are. So now the image is 2048 by 1465, and this is what we want. The second thing, is the oil itself. So I think I just typed oil paint or something like that into Pixabay, which is one of my favorite free, uh, royalty-free sites. So we're gonna go ahead with a free download at the highest resolution, and here we are. So let's go ahead and drop both of these files into Photoshop and get started. So the first thing I did to get an image like this is actually mask out the head wrap that she has itself. The idea was to take any colorful head wrap they originally had and swap it to this weird vector oil look. So let's go ahead and do that now. First thing, we're gonna grab our magic wand tool, which is right over here. Now, I'm sure there's a way to mask it and carefully grab everything, but I'm not sure how to do that. So the tools I'm gonna to use are the magic wand and the magnetic lasso, and I'll show you how this works in a sec. So for the wand, rather than select all of this individual purple, which let's be honest, it's gonna take forever getting all of that, what I might do is grab the background, which is a whole lot cleaner, and then just subtract what we don't want from the image, which I think is the way to go, and that's the way I did it the first time too. So let's go ahead and grab the background here, and as you can see, everything selected is currently good to go. So only the background can be edited, and we'll flip that later. The next, we're gonna grab this magnetic lasso here, and what this does is it actually lets you stick to the outline of something itself. So we're just gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit, and I like to do this in chunks. It makes things a bit easier. So we're gonna grab from here, and just start working our way around. Now, there are a ton of little points being drawn out here, and I've always found that to be the best. You can lower that by going to frequency. Um, that would make, you know, one every so often, which might be good for whatever your use is too. But I like to keep mine nice and high. So we're gonna keep going down this path here. And at times where it gets a bit straggly like that, um, totally normal. 
Another great option in that case is maybe to drop the frequency down. There are fewer points and it might be a bit stronger, but let's say this doesn't work for whatever reason, we can definitely come back to that. So let me go ahead and grab this ear now. And we don't have to be perfect in this case. We're actually gonna come back with a normal lasso and just the human eye and go through it that way as well. So you definitely have options. So we're just gonna mask this out as best we can for now. And I promise we'll come back to it. So now we're going around her cheekbones, trying to be as careful as possible, but with the magnetic tool, it's not perfect, you know? So we're just gonna grab whatever's left here, which looks to be right around here. I'm actually gonna keep this little section here too, um, just in case we want that contrast. Now we have her shoulder as well, so we're gonna grab the lasso, and I'm holding shift, by the way, to add that little plus sign there. Um, that's what shift does. If you hold alt, I think it's alt, um, you can draw a circle and add things back, but we don't want that. So just holding shift, dragging down through here, and perfect. Now, what we can do now is grab the little box itself and go through here and grab the rest of it. The magnetic lasso tool is a bit finicky, to be honest with you, right near the edges, which is totally normal. So here, we've actually overshot it. So we want to start selecting more. So I'll hold Alt and just drag it down like that. Perfect. And we're going to do the same here. I'm going to grab that amount there. Grab that. And keep in mind, when we add this oil painting to the actual image itself, you're not going to see the background. So it's really up to you if you want to add additional design traits to either the model or the ink, um, your call. Now, whoops, in this case, it's the other way. So we're going to hold Shift instead of Alt. And just go ahead and carefully select her ear um, as best we can. So I'm just going to pull that up. Now, it doesn't necessarily look like this in the actual image, but I'm taking a couple liberties here, which isn't always a bad thing. There we go. And just a couple more and we should be all good to go. Uh, this is a big one here. So we're just gonna select the outside of her ear, being as careful as we can and just use a combination of Alt and Shift. Whoops, whoops, there we go. Finally, I think there's this one last home stretch here. Now we can definitely overshoot the face a little bit as well. Um, once that oil comes in, you're not gonna know the head wrap was even there to begin with. And that looks good to me. So now, as you can see, if I were to grab, let's say a paint tool or something, um, I could draw everywhere that isn't the head wrap, which is what we want. So I'm gonna right click, uh, right click the layer here and duplicate it. Now I duplicate everything a few times. This is just a force of habit for me. Um, and I always hide the background just in case I wanna start fresh at whatever point. So selecting only this one layer here, if we go ahead and hit the delete key, it deletes everything with the exception of this head wrap, which is cool. So what we can do is uh, back up here a little bit and swap these two layers. So now you have a layer with everything and a layer with just the head wrap. Next, we're gonna grab this giant splotchy art image here and we're gonna control A, control C, so select all and copy and then control V to paste. Now, this was a big image, so if you hold Control T to transform, uh, you can actually change the sizing. I always overshoot mine just because I'm a little paranoid about, you know, anything like this happening where there's a bit of white space left. So we're going to get rid of all of that and hit Enter. This is what it looks like. Now, we could always um, Control T and hold Shift to kind of rotate it, uh, depending on what angle we like. But in this case, I kind of like the one it is now. So what we're going to do now is duplicate this layer again because we want a background and the head wrap and drop the head wrap down. So now if you hold control and click this layer, it's going to select everything in here, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to go to the first layer here and just hit delete, um, which you're actually going to see, and this is my mistake, 
um, it's anti-selected. So we're gonna wanna fix that. Uh, we're gonna hold control I, which is invert. Um, once you do that, we should be able to go ahead and hit delete again. Hit, uh oh. Hit delete. Oh, maybe control shift I. Okay, I don't think that's it either. Okay, cool. We've done it, but we've accidentally inverted this at some point. Um, control shift I. There you go, control I. That'll flip it over. So now you're seeing this weird wobbly shape. Um, next thing, we're gonna grab this main layer here, turn that back on, and hit control A to select everything. This is the outside borders. Now we're gonna go select, and we're gonna shrink it down by modifying the, let's do contract. So here, um, it's already set to 40 pixels. It, can, it really can be whatever you want, but I'm doing 40, and you gotta make sure this is checked here. So at the bounds of the canvas right around the end, we want it to still shrink. So hit okay. And now you've gone ahead and pretty much selected everything that isn't this outside border, which is perfect. So what we're gonna do is just hit delete. And now you have this, which is the cool background and the head wrap that actually flows seamlessly into the background since they're the same image. All you're doing now is turning on the other layers and there we go. Now, of course, it's gonna be at a bit of fine tuning. Um, you're gonna notice that right around here, there's some white space, which can be a bit annoying. And we're gonna figure out what layer that's on. Now, I think it might actually be this layer here. It wasn't erased perfectly. And this is one of the things that you can definitely take your time and feather, out, feather it out a bit more. But let's see here. Okay, so what we can do in this case is control A for background copy two here, and just increase the size of the model ever so slightly. We're gonna increase it this way, increase it that way. So now you've grown a little bit to kind of help fill that gap. We can manually move it back in place. So now all this white line here, um, it's still there. So let's do this. We're gonna control and click layer one. We're going to select, modify, contract, just like we did with the background here, and contract it by, let's say, two pixels. There. So now, if we hold Control shift i and then delete, it's gonna delete all that background there, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. If we get rid of the normal head wrap, all of a sudden, it's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, one of the things we can also do here is erase all of this additional head wrap, which we don't need. So if we grab just our normal lasso with a little bit of a steady hand here, we can go ahead and select just roughly everything that we kind of don't want anymore. So all of this, then we can go to edit, once you have the layer selected, edit and then fill using Photoshop's content aware, which it thinks for you, hit okay. And magically, once it renders out here, ooh, Okay, so it's now perfect. What we can do in this case is hit the brush tool and hold uh, Alt just to select the background there. Right click and increase the size and the hardness and just manually erase it. Now, this is one of those things where it can take a lot more time if you are, um, have a busy background or something like that. But since we've only got a solid white, um, there's no real issue here. So we pop this layer back on and suddenly, things are looking a lot better. There's no real white space anywhere except for a couple spots in the bottom here. What you will notice, however, is that there is that border. So we're gonna to wanna to fix that by increasing the size of the model ever so slightly. So let's do something like that. And we just adjust it um, right here, zooming in, and perfect. So something like this might be the way to go. Now to keep this video under 15 minutes, cause it's already been a while, this is where the minor adjustments come in. So you can kind of reshape this, nudge things up, down, just to make it look perfect. But in my case, things are looking pretty good. And this has been, you know, a 10, 15 minute exercise here. So we'll flip all the layers back on and here you have it.
Now we can go ahead and grab the layer with the person herself and go to image adjustments. And here we can play around with it. If you wanted to hop into shadows and highlights, you can actually go ahead and alter the amount of shadows or the color tone or mid tone or anything like that on her skin, which is kind of an interesting feature if you wanna get a bit creative. Here you can hop in and do things like alter the color of the eyelids um, with a low opacity or something like that. It's totally up to you. But I think here is a good place to end it. Within you know, 10, 15 minutes, I think anyone can get a passable version of something quite cool on Photoshop. And this doesn't require any work on Illustrator. It doesn't require you know, any work much at all to begin with. And I think with a bit of fine touching, you can end up with something like this. Take care.